Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm looking at your requests for budget increases, some of them to parts of your budget over 10%, 12% increase in your salaries. I want to talk about overreach and mismanagement within your agency, both regarding the collection of information and the seizure of firearms. Uh, first, I want to talk about last year's IG report, audit of the Bureau of ATF, uh, explosive <laughs> firearm disposal practice, and how your agency lost thousands of guns and gun parts in your possession. Uh, as the report notes, since September 2015, the ATF has utilized uh, the National Disposal Branch, formerly the National Firearms and Ammunition Destruction Branch, to centralize and streamline the disposal process of forfeited and ATF-owned firearms. Each year, the ATF destroys thousands of firearms at the NDB. But the IG undertook the audit following the discovery that thousands of firearms, firearm parts, and ammunition had been stolen from the NFAD from 2016 to 2019. The theft, perpetrated by a former contract security guard stationed at your ATF facility in Martinsburg, West Virginia, were found by accident during a traffic stop. And the report stated further that the ATF has implemented new control procedures to reduce the risk, but the ATF has not implemented all improvements to NDB operations recommended over three years ago. Uh, Director, what type of security procedures are required by private gun dealers, and what would happen if a private dealer stored guns on top of vaults instead of inside them, or left keys lying around, maybe even propped exterior doors open? or left a wide array of guns available for just anyone to grab as this was done at your Martinsburg facility? Um, with respect to what happened um, at Martinsburg, from what I understand from reviewing the reports and talking to individuals, as you say, there was a, uh, a criminal activity that we were victimized by at ATF, and out of that came increased security and controls we have, uh, which we work which, which we are, which, which we, which we do have, and are working to to make sure that three we years can, later. I, I, it, it obviously, you're correct. There was a vulnerability. The vulnerability was addressed. I wish, I think we all would wish, the vulnerability would be addressed beforehand. With respect to your uh, question about uh, people in the in the in the firearms industry, uh, gun dealers. Mm -hmm. So uh, we work together with the NSSF in partnership. Uh, to try to make sure we're doing our best to support and educate firearms dealers on having secure stores, uh, the things that they can do. Uh, ATF responds to every single burglary or robbery of a firearms dealer in the United States. Uh, well, they're required to notify you within 48 hours, right? And hopefully it's quicker and we go that night because and those are those are serious crimes. Uh, there is a range among uh, firearms dealers in terms of how much security they, they implement. Well, I'm glad you think it was serious uh, what happened at, at your Martinsburg facility. Now, you've implemented or you're attempting to implement a new zero tolerance policy. Uh, would you deem this a willful violation that greatly affects public safety and ATF's ability to trace firearms recovered in violent crimes, uh, for which a revocation of the FFL's license would be the end result of such a violation if they not sure what if, if we saw the same thing that happened at your Martinsburg facility happen with an FFL under your zero tolerance policy, uh, wouldn't you move against their license immediately? The, there are five uh, specific violations that are, that are set forth as triggering the Enhanced Enforcement Initiative. I don't think any of them relates to uh, the, the storage of, of firearms. Uh, uh, I, I suppose if somebody's willfully doing that, but the key word that Congress has told us is we can only revoke, uh, have the power to revoke if somebody's engaging in a willful violation. Uh, so it's things like we, we contact you for a trace and you say, no, I'm not going to respond. Uh, you uh, supply a firearm uh, to a prohibited person. You fail to run a required background check. There's two more. But even those have to be done willfully and we have due process, so we have a hearing. We've, we've put out numbers on this, Congressman, and about half the people who proceeded to their hearing, uh, actually, there was no revocation. Uh, so we, we were very careful to try to evaluate the evidence uh, impartially to determine who is willfully violating the law. Well, all right, let's move on. Uh, I think we should uh, apply the same zero tolerance policy and give you all due process the same way uh, you're, you're moving against FFLs. Um, 
as you know, FFLs have to give all of their firearm transactions records to ATF once they go out of business uh, in an OBRA database. And uh, prior to President Biden taking office, FFLs were allowed to destroy these records after 20 years, but a new rule mandates that they be kept in perpetuity now. And this is a concern that ATF is taking a backdoor approach to creating a federal firearms registry, despite intent to the contrary. So um, I think that we have a problem with that, especially since you can't determine the number of prosecutions resulting from completed crime gun trace requests. We learned this in a letter that you responded to yesterday uh, that was over a year old. So uh, I would urge you to be um, swifter in your responses to this committee and uh, actually uh, consider uh, the impact of the gentleman has expired.